Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Prime Minister Antony Samaras of Greece has to win over 12 members of parliament to avoid a snap election. That might allow Syriza, the left party led by Alexis Tsipras, to gain power. The Greek parliament has had two votes to secure the government but failed to do so. Now joining us from London to discuss what's happening is Kostas Lapavistas. He's a professor of economics at the University of London School of Oriental and African Studies. He teaches political economy of finance and he's a regular columnist for The Guardian. Thank you so much for joining us, Kostas. It's a pleasure. So what is the situation in Greece and what can we expect in the next few days? Uh, the situation is very fluid and very unstable at the moment. Um, there have been two votes in Parliament uh, attempting to elect uh, the new president uh, of the Republic. Um, they've been inconclusive and we're heading towards the third and final vote on the 29th of December. It looks as if um, the government will find it very difficult um, to make the required number. Um, they need 180 MPs out of 300. They're 12 short. It looks as if they'll find it very difficult. If they do, there's going to be an election. Um, that's what the Constitution says. The election will probably take place towards the end of January or beginning of February the latest. Uh, if there is an election, then we can confidently expect the main opposition party, Syriza, which is the main party of the left, to win. Uh, and for government, either by itself or with the support of another small party. This will be a historic moment for Greece and a very important moment for Europe. And, and why do you make this prediction that Syriza will win? What are the indicators? Um, every election poll the last six months to a year um, has put um, Syriza uh, ahead. Um, uh, there is no doubt that there is a groundswell of support. And uh, if the election polls show that um, Syriza is ahead by a good few points, then come election time, the undecideds, of whom there are quite a few, are likely to vote for the party that is most likely to form a government. This is how it, that's how it works. So Syriza will probably emerge even stronger. We don't know if it's going to have enough of support, uh, enough support to form government by itself, but it's almost certain that it will be the biggest party. It will be a major surprise if it's not the biggest party. The main reason for this, of course, is not so much what Syriza has said itself, which is fine and we can talk about it in a minute, I'm sure. It's mostly that the government coalition has basically fallen apart. Um, uh, by applying the um, austerity measures and all the various other economic policies that uh, the European Union has uh, foisted upon Greece, um, they have basically, basically destroyed their electoral support. The country is against them, there's no question. Even the, the, the hard core of their support is ebbing away. Now, Costa, Syriza is a broad coalition um, from left to radical left. Um, what are some of the points of contention? Let me put it this way to you. Um, Ever since the um, Eurozone crisis broke out, um, it's now four years ago, there have been two uh, major lines of argument within the left across Europe. One line of argument basically said, we need hardline policies, we need to go against austerity, and we need to break out of the monetary union, and we need to, uh, to go for radical reshaping of economy and society. The other line has been saying we need radical measures, we need to uh, go against what the European Union is imposing on our countries, but we don't need to get out of the Euro European Monetary Union. We can make these changes within the Union. And by making these changes within the Union, we can change the Union itself. We might call the first line the um, get out of the, of the Euro line, and the second line the good Euro line. Um, politically, the good euro line has triumphed. That is what the main line of Syriza is, that it will make uh, profound changes, that it will oppose what the European Union is imposing on Greece, 
but it will not get out of the monetary union. It will not uh, break unilaterally with uh, uh, the European Union and, and, its, and its power. Um, within Syriza, however, you will find supporters and people who think uh, along the other line too. Um, Syriza is a big coalition. It contains all kinds uh, of left currents, and it contains a very strong element that basically thinks there will be conflict with the, with the European Union. Um, that's going to that's gonna play out now. We, we are a few steps away from that. Uh, now, the business press is reporting that even if Syriza gets in, that Alexis Tsipras is actually speaking from both sides of his mouth. On one hand, he's saying he's not averse to um, staying in the European Union, but he has no fetish with the euro. What does he mean by this? He hasn't actually said that he's got no fetish with the euro. This, was, this, was, this is old news. Uh, Tsipras and uh, his group and the leadership of Syriza used to say that um, some time ago. That's how they fought the last election in 2012. The current line of, of Syriza, the current line of uh, Tsipras and the group around him who runs Syriza is that they will stay in the euro. Um, they will not. They've got no plans, no intention uh, to break out of the euro. So uh, they will make all these changes, all these radical things, which are very nice, actually. They are very desirable and they ought to happen, but they are promising that they will do them by staying within the euro. And um, we will see. That will be tested out um, very soon, in the uh, early next year. And do you think that's a good idea? I think that... Before I answer that, let me tell you uh, something that's very important. At the moment, the forces of uh, reaction in Greece, the forces of conservatism, which have basically ruined the country, are engaging in a campaign of uh, terrorizing people again. That's how they won the last election in 2012, on the basis of fear that uh, if you don't apply these policies, these austerity policies, if you don't do that, then the country will be forced out of the monetary union and then the sky, the sky is going to cave in. If they were, if were forced out of the union, the monetary union, it would be a disaster. They scared people. And they're trying to do the same thing now. They're trying to do exactly the same thing now. And uh, if there is an election, the scaremongering will, re will reach fe fever pitch. There's no question. Uh, it, it's clear. It, it, there's no, it's not a reasoned argument. It's not a rational, a rational argument. It's just fear. So we've got to be very careful um, when we discuss the options and the possibilities of action by Syriza. Now, the program that Syriza has proclaimed is actually very desirable and quite modest. They are not particularly radical in what they are promising to do. They are not revolutionary. What they want to do is basically achieve a significant reduction of the debt, a debt write-off, which the country needs. And then they want to lift austerity. They want to lift tax you know, the, the huge burden of tax on the country. They want to reconnect people to electricity, do something about food supply, um, do something about unemployment, uh, and do something about public investment. These are minimal measures. They ought to happen, and they ought to happen immediately. So all right-thinking people and all people of the left ought to be supporting Syriza. And that's what I do. However, <laughs> however... Yes. I have serious doubts as to whether that is feasible within uh, the monetary union. I, I, I don't think it is. I think there will be conflict, uh, and then we will see what will happen. So, Kostas, um, isn't it a bit contradictory being able to address the, the debt um, and uh, pay back or renegotiate with the European Union and address austerity at the same time? These seem to be contradictory goals. I personally um, have been one of the most outspoken um, critics of this line, and I have pointed that out uh, many a time. But history and politics doesn't always move in a, along rational lines. Um, the Greek people at the moment um, are moving away from the right and from forces of conservatism, and they're going to Syriza. That's a very important 
moment in Greek history, and it potentially could be a very important moment in European history, because uh, we might see something happening for the first time against austerity across Europe. Now, it's not happening along lines that I would find rational, as I said, or, or logical, and it's not happening along lines that I would prefer in terms of a radical challenge to um, the status quo in Europe and to capitalism itself. But these are the lines along which it's happening. So, um, in my view, uh, Syriza ought to be supported. And those who understand that there, there is likely to be struggle and serious conflict ahead ought to be preparing for it, even if that doesn't include the leadership of Syriza. Uh, even if the leadership of Syriza think that uh, they can achieve it within the monetary union, uh, which I don't, I, I don't uh, those who understand what is likely to happen ought to be supporting Syriza and preparing for the battles ahead, I think. Costas, now the business press is reporting that the economy is doing very well. And uh, is that so for ordinary people? Are the situation of employment uh, and uh, ordinary life for uh, people who suffered during the crisis, uh, are they doing better? The recession is coming to an end. Uh, it's clear. The Greek economy has basically stopped contracting. It has contracted by... Uh, an overall uh, amount of 25%. It's a monumental contraction, uh, comparing, uh, comparable to the uh, interwar great crisis in the United States, 1930s. Unemployment reached 27% uh, during that period, and uh, poverty exploded. Now, the recession is coming to an end. The economy is not contracting anymore. There might be some weak, anemic growth this year, and possibly next year. Um, that doesn't mean at all, however, that the condition of, every, uh, of, of, of everyday life, the conditions of everyday life are actually getting better. On the contrary, poverty, despite the um, end of the recession, is actually getting worse still. Greece uh, is facing a peculiar humanitarian crisis that is kept silent, but it's actually a humanitarian crisis. And in a way, that's why Syriza has made headway, because he has understood it. And he has promised to deal immediately with the humanitarian dimension um, of the Greek crisis, which very shamefully has been kept quiet. If Syriza will, will reconnect people to the electricity network, it will do something about soup kitchens, it will do something about the homeless people, um, and it will deal with the um, deepening absolute poverty, uh, especially for ch children uh, that the country is facing. These are not getting better. So, um, so neither the economy is going anywhere very fast, nor is Greek society um, improving in any serious way. That's why there's such anger uh, among people and such a turn away uh, from the conservative parties and towards the party of the left. The party of the left had better deliver. Um, whatever else it does, it has an obligation towards the Greek people and towards everybody else in Europe to apply its program. If that means conflict, so be it. Right. So, Kostas, I want to thank you for joining us. And uh, we will keep an eye on what's happening in the next few days. And uh, we'll definitely come back to you for an update. We will know after the 29th of December when the third vote uh, in Parliament will take place. Then we will know whether the, we're going to have an election and the month of January is bound to be very, very uh, interesting for uh, socialists and left-wingers across the world. Great. I thank you for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.